three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and uh, here is today's comic. Thanks for joining me today. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't watched my episodes before, uh, I'm constantly trying to evolve things, still trying to find my voice in all, the, in all this mess. Um, I'm just a Joe Schmo YouTuber. Um, I'm really just a comic fan like you probably, I'm guessing you are if you're watching this video. I'm not trying to be anything super special. I just like to talk about comics. And I like to meet new people who are also like-minded, you know, in the in the hobby. And just, it's, it's what I feel is one of the best things about comics is that shared experience. So anyways, let's talk about this comic here, Daredevil, number 11, by Chip Zdarsky and Mark Chichetto. This is a very special issue for me. I really, really liked this issue. Um, I got into, I've been into Daredevil for a long time. He's one of my favorite heroes since going back to the really early 80s. Um, Frank Miller's run on Daredevil is the seminal run. Daredevil is everything he is today pretty much because of Frank Miller. I, I do know, you know, Stan Lee created the character, but but Frank Miller made Daredevil. He took him to the next level. And everyone that's been doing great Daredevil since has been building off, uh, you know, the shoulders of, of Frank Miller's creation. I got into this Daredevil run uh, due to another YouTuber, Sergeant Bats, who donated the first three issues digitally to me so I could read them, check them out. I wasn't going to buy the books. And in truth, I wasn't even really buying Marvel Comics at the time. I was only buying the Spider-Man Life Story, which is fantastic, by the way. But it was a mini-series, and I was just expecting to, to get in and get out. I was really fed up with Marvel. I wasn't going to commit to any ongoing series. Um, and Sergeant Bats donated these books to me, and I read them. I mean, <laughs> if you can give me the books, I'm not going to be like, screw that, I'm not going to read them. So I did, and they were really good. The first three issues, really solid. I did reviews on them. You can go check them out earlier. Um, then something happened. Uh, it took a while for me to find issue four. So I stalled on the reading. And then other people were spoiling the stories online. I follow other YouTubers. And there was this great, you know, issue number, well, all the five issues were great in the first story arc. But Spider-Man shows up in the last issue. And there were some great moments and people spoiled it. So I kind of knew what was to come. It took a long time to read these issues. I did finally find issue number four. I actually do have hard copies of two and three. All I need is number one now to get my collection. I'm very happy. After number five, the second story arc, which was six, seven, eight, and nine, really started going downhill. The writing wasn't quite as good. Still okay, good writing. But the art just took a dump. Chichetto left for something. I don't know. Um, and then issue 10 was sort of like a one-off issue with an all different artist who was even worse. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? And I just wasn't inspired to continue with this book. And then I looked at my collection and I was like, man, issue 12 just came out. I, I, I need to power through these because I'm still buying them. And I know Chichetto's back because, you know, I bought the issues. So I powered through it and then I got to this issue and I'm glad I did because that second story arc turned out better than, than it started. And it's very important to the overall saga that these arcs, because these arcs are all connected. And uh, we get to issue 11 here, Through Hell Part 1. And I like that they have on the covers, you, you can see the parts, so you know a good jumping on point. Although truthfully, the jumping on point is one because these three story arcs are really just one larger story arc. Let's get into the book. All right, we start off um, on the first two pages with uh, with a scene that takes place in an apartment. A woman, uh, it's either her boyfriend or her husband, seems to be this abusive type. He's real pissed off. He's jealous, and he starts off, "Ah, oh, for fuck's sake!" Bang, bang! He's pounding on the door. You piece of shit! Open this fucking door! No, you're crazy! Ball. Bang, bang, bang. 
You went to Billy's. Everyone told me, you piece of shit. Took my stash. You went to Billy's. You you do this every time. I wasn't with Billy. You get fucked up and imagine shit. But I'm through, you hear me? I called the cops on your ass. Kabam! I'll kill you. You fuck. No, you won't. You won't hurt me anymore. Help's coming. And you need to see that this psychopath, you know, look at his eyes, bloodshot. He's probably hopped up on something. I'll fucking kill you before that happens. They'll fucking help you into the ground, you. And Daredevil sneaks up behind him. What the? And then he dies, you know, to the ground. There's wrestling, crashing around in the in the living room. Struggle, struggle. And you can kind of see now as the camera pulls back, so to speak, that this Daredevil has got pants on. Um, it's not actually Daredevil. And we know from the previous books that people are, you know, because Daredevil's kind of stopped being Daredevil. And so people have picked up the mask and are starting to help each other and, and do like the good Samaritan stuff. So these are the Samaritan Daredevils, as I'm calling them. And now we can see on this page um, that uh, you can see his face. We know for sure with the mustache. Um, and he's choked this guy out. I don't know if the guy's dead. We don't ever really know. And all of a sudden the cops show up. And uh, this fake Daredevil says, it's, it's okay. I won't put up a fight. I just, just wanted to. And then they approach closer with clubs. Then it says, you need help. Hmm, okay, who needs help? We get to the credits page. Going to fill you in on what's been going on. Daredevil is everywhere. Ambushed by his corrupt New York Police Department co-workers, Detective Cole North, the resilient transplant from Chicago, was saved by an unfamiliar masked man he can only assume is the true guardian devil. Despite the many Daredevil copycats, Matt Murdock cannot stop himself from trying to save the kitchen. His normal life has still led to trouble, including a connection with the Libra's crime family. And now the devil isn't the only thing from Matt's past that is coming back to haunt him through hell part one. So we get to the next page, uh, page five here. And with that voice is Electra. Anyone can see it. Electra, my ninja ex-girlfriend. She loved me as Matt Murdock and Daredevil, though my secret identity was reset months ago. She now thinks of me as two different exes. So you can see Daredevil volume five, number 20. It's too many freaking volumes for Marvel. It'd be stupid. Why do you do this? Just continue the numbering and make it so much easier. Sorry. Speaking of... How do you see through this? She's poking at his mask. And I aim to keep it that way. And Daredevil shakes her off. I train with stick just like you, Electra, so you know sight is overrated. Does she know? What are you doing here? You're gonna die. That's rich, coming from you. You're going to die. And so she throws a punch at him. He blocks, blocks again but she gets a knee in because you've grown soft. You clearly decided to stop being Daredevil, which is fine. Daredevil was a stupid idea, but you're also clearly still trying to save people by putting yourself in harm's way. Stick trained us. He trained us well, but you've forgotten his teachings. So Daredevil, or whatever you want to call yourself now, I'm now your stick. And then we cut to page seven and eight, where the Libra's crime family uh, is doing some business. And all of this ties into the previous, you know, 10 issues leading up to this. Um, you know, Thomas, the son here of this, this woman, he's, please, Ma, you're killing me. No, Thomas, I'm saving you. So she's making arrangements to make peace with the other crime families. And, you know, with his bookstore, which he has for his wife because she's a big bookworm or whatever, it's kind of like their front business, um, got blown up by the Owlsleys, which is one of the other crime families. And uh, Kingpin had previously 
made arrangements. He's like, I'm going straight. I'm leaving this. You guys can divide up the areas. My only demand is that you get along. You don't work against each other. I don't want any troubles between you. That's the only thing. Otherwise, you conduct your business how you want. But the owls leave across the line um, and blew up this guy's business. Um, and his wife's all upset. Meanwhile, his wife's also having an affair with Matt Murdock. There's a lot going on. Uh, he can't take it. Um, the wife, Mindy, shows up and uh, little daughter crying. And, you know, she's just really upset. She doesn't like what's going on. And, you know, she's just like, you promised me that if I ever was with you, you know, we'd be safe, da, da, da. And he's like, what do you think I'm trying to do? That's why we're here. And he's all fed up. And you can see some of these. Look at this panel. It's like this this look uh on thomas's face he's just like that's why we're here and he's got his hands it's like i'm making that you can't see but i'm making that same gesture here and the kid I, it's the attention to detail uh, from mark Chichetto and telling the story visually is really impressive um and she threatens to leave which of course is only going to add to the stress um we cut over here to page 10 and now we're at the scene with cole and, uh, and Cole's with his new partner because the police, the captain, is won't let him work solo because he's gotten into some trouble. Um, some dirty cops want to do him in. Of course, that cops don't recognize that. Um, and uh, the new partner, Detective Green, is trying to chit chat him up and you know get the dirt, and get the scoop, what's going on. Cole doesn't want to talk about it. So um, what they're doing is. Mayor Fisk has tasked the police force to get the street level Marvel heroes, kind of like bring them in. They're, they're vigilantes, and he's not going to have them on their street. So Daredevil was previously on his uh, on his radar, and also Spider Man. He's been tasked by the captain to get Spider Man. So they're staging these rot, these muggings, hoping that you know one of these characters like Daredevil or whatever will take the bait and stop the mugging. Um, and he's also in conflict now because he was saved. The cops tried to kill him and Daredevil saved him. So he's got this conflict within him of like, I got to get Daredevil, but Daredevil saved my life. And it's a really, really cool um, uh, character arc for, for Cole. He starts off as this cold, by the books, you know, stormtrooper-like character who just I'm going to get these guys. All I care about is the law. And now he's he's having human moments and, and understanding why, you know, that may not be the right path. Meanwhile, Spider-Man takes the bait. A classic mugging. It's nice to know in a world filled with cyber crimes, people still make some time for traditional. Hey, this isn't some sort of intervention, is it? Because he goes to rescue and everyone draws guns. Now, now. Like, sure, maybe I'm addicted to saving lives, but seriously, guys, I've got it under control. <laughs> they try to get him with the net. He's just bouncing all around. And there's this really cool dialogue or narration, I should say, from Zadarsky. I, just, I really like this. I'm going to read it. You can't really prepare for it. The first time you see a real person jump 15 feet in the air. I mean, really, says Spider-Man. I could stop saving lives whenever I want. Your brain shuts down for a second, seeing someone move faster than any human should. At least Daredevil moved like a human. Freeze, face down, on the ground, now! Wait a second, I know you, Detective Cole North. Let's go find a quiet spot without so many guns, because you and I, shit. We're going to have a little chat. <laughs> and oh, I love that scene. Um... And the narration, Zdarsky has, I mentioned Frank Miller in the beginning, and that's one of the things that Frank Miller, he just had this real grounded sense um, and this, this sense of wonder. By, by, putting, by skewing the perspective of the audience to be like real people, you know, looking at the world through the lens of reality, and seeing these characters, it makes the characters feel more awe-inspiring. It's one of the things that that great miniseries Marvels did. If you've never read Marvels from the early 90s by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross, that's a must 
buy. Go find the trade paperback. Get it. You will love it. <laughs> it's it's a must buy. It's beautifully all painted art interiors by Alex Ross. Kurt Busiek may be writing one of the best things he's ever written. But it's, what, what I loved about that story so much is that it was all through the lens of this photojournalist um, who's just a normal guy witnessing awesomeness, like the, the things that are unbelievable. We tend to get a little bit jaded reading comic books because you see Spider-Man doing stuff all the time and it's like, oh, hum, ho oh, hum, this is what normal things a Spider-Man can do. But Zdarsky makes us remember like, oh no, this is amazing. And if you saw this in, in reality, you would just, your jaw would drop. Um, so we cut over now and uh, this is like, I believe page 13 and Matt Murdock, who's working as a parole officer for this character, Joey, who he's killed his brother He's, he's got a guilty complex. Bat, Matt Murdock suffers from total guilty conscience. Um, he, uh, he he wants to help this guy. He just wants to help everyone, which makes him a hero. But he, he killed his brother accidentally. Um, and that's why he can't be Daredevil anymore. And this kid has gotten himself in trouble. Matt's been his parole officer, but he's trying on the side to help him out. And uh, he is, speaks with the mother and, you know, the mom's real happy that he's been, you know, putting that time in to help his her son. And that's that's kind of what's going on there. Next, uh, we skip over to the next scene, which is Kingpin at the airport. And uh, he's had his men capture Owlsley. And this is where Kingpin is going to confront Owlsley for breaking the truce that he set up. Uh, Owlsley is mouthing off to him, right? And then Kingpin says, shut up. You've been given the gift of speech again, Owsley, but it's a precarious gift. We're here because I enjoy airports, no pesky drones, unlimited possibilities. Plus, I'd like to send you on a nice trip. A trip, you? Is this because of the Libra shit? Yes, this is because of the Libra shit. I gave you all an order to respect the boundaries between you and your fellow bosses. You've been drug running in Hell's Kitchen, you ordered a hit on Izzy Libris. This is the opposite of what I asked. I normally would kill you, but I'm feeling magnanimous today. You will get on my jet, you will go to my private island for a nice vacation, and you will think about what you've done while my men re-educate your organization and deliver reparations to the Libris family. Understood? And Owlsley just stares at him. And something you don't see very often, <laughs> he tells Kingpin. No. To which Kingpin's like, excuse me? You heard me. I ain't going anywhere. You're out of the game, Wilson. Only blood you taste these days is on your plate in fancy restaurants. In fact, a little birdie told me that you've got a dinner invite coming up, yeah? Heard the Stromwinds would even be there. Most powerful family in America. Wow. And he's cutting his bindings this whole time. Seems that me, you have plans, Fisk. Plans that could get derailed if your shit gets dragged into the light. And he slashes these guys' throats and then leaps away. To which I'm like, I don't know who this Owlsley character is. I thought he was a crime boss. But it's obviously he's either a mutant or a vampire or something. He's got some special abilities. I don't know. If you know, put them in the comments. Please educate me. Um, so maybe you should start playing it safe, Mr. Mayor. Man, what a glorious sight. And then we go to the roof. We got that chit chat that Spider Man. And uh, this was my favorite part of the whole book. I mean, this whole book is great, but I got to this part, and I, man, I just want Chip Zdarsky to write Spider Man. His his Spider Man life story wasn't like an, you know, an Elseworlds type story. It wasn't continuity. It was a completely, you know, pure concoction of his imagination. Um, but it was. It was a beautifully told story, emotional on every issue. But here is continuity Spider-Man. And man, does he get him the way I love him. This is the mature Spider-Man, not the 16-year-old kid, Peter Parker. This is the, you know, the maybe the late 20s, early 30s, Peter Parker. I'm usually in bed by now, snug as a bug or spider, tighter than a spider. No, that really doesn't. For the last time, what are we doing here? Says Cole, tied up. You know, he's webbed up. 
Still has a gun in his hand. You've been watching the sunrise for almost an hour while I've been doing mental paperwork on your new charge of kidnap. Oh, wait, sorry. I was <laughs> fucked this all up already. You've been watching the sunrise for almost an hour while I've been doing mental paperwork on your new charge of kidnapping. Oh, please, says Spider Man. You wasted my time with a fake mugging, shot a net at me, and pointed guns. This is nothing. Besides, you're not a kid. This is man napping. This is all jokes to you, isn't it? You think you're above all this. You and your pals above the law. You know what? Yeah, I kind of do. Happy now? What kind of laws are there about a guy who can throw cars and jump over buildings and save thousands of people, but needs to wear a mask to keep his loved ones safe? This whole deal, there's no rule book. Look, I get it. You swore an oath. Well, so did I. So did all of us. Spider-Man's pointing his finger. And sometimes we mess up, like your previous punching bag, Daredevil. But guess what? We solve it. All of us want to keep saving lives, so we solve it. Daredevil messed up, and I made sure he went away to get his head on straight. He may never come back, but I sure as hell won't let him rot in prison under Mayor Fisk. He's a hero. So a guy in a mask can jump a little higher, punch a little harder, and he gets away with murder? Who's making that call? Don't slippery slope the guy who can stick to walls. You know what I'm saying. You need to stop thinking about the legal and the illegal and start thinking about right and wrong. We've been up here for almost an hour. You know what happens in an hour mark? My webbing dissolves. So you have a choice. You want to save lives? The camera focuses on the gun. Or you want to uphold the law? Focuses on Cole's face. I just love this. Great shots. The webbing dissolves and Cole's just standing there, the gun limp in his hand. He's not sure. He's at a crossroads. What were you thinking? Thinks Cole to himself. And Spider-Man's gone. He's just left sitting on a building with something to think about. And it really is. And what I loved about this scene, number one, is it puts Spider-Man in a great light. Not just as a hero, but an advocate for other heroes. This is a guy who earlier on issue five did what he said. He took out Daredevil and said, you're, you're no longer Daredevil. You're done. I'm ending you. You, you know, uh, you can't be doing what you're doing. Um, but here he is now with Detective Cole North and being like, no, you're done. Like, I'm not letting you have Daredevil. Dude's a hero. But Chip never tells us, the audience, what to think, right? The, the author's not taking sides. He's putting the voices of these two characters and what they would say and letting us, the audience, make up our own minds about what we think. Beautiful writing. It's emotional. It's in character. We love it. Meanwhile, Matt and Foggy are in line, um, presumably to get brunch somewhere at a restaurant. I don't know. Matt gets a phone call from Mindy, who he's having an affair with, and she's all fed up. She's mad at her husband, and uh, she wants, well, you know, a little, little uh, snoochy time, a little uh, booty call from Matt. And Matt, you know, offers to help her. She's like, I, I, I don't want a white knight. I just want, you know, I just want the D, <laughs> the DD. If you get what I'm saying, D, DD's D, <laughs> the triple D. Uh, anyways. Uh, but Matt's distracted, two blocks away. Someone's in trouble. Multiple voices. Cops. But they're not in tr the one in trouble. Matt, Matt, are you still there? The one in trouble is Daredevil. And we end the scene with Daredevil and those crooked cops. And what's going to happen? We don't know. We have to stay tuned till next issue. All right. So originally... I was going to uh, cut the video <laughs> uh, over to the next issue and do a two-part video, but I, but I didn't. It was too long. Uh, I was like, yeah, if I do that, I'll just have this crazy 45-minute plus video, you know, and I didn't want to also be too short on this book because the book was awesome. Uh, I hope. I know I read a lot from the book. I do that. I, I do probably too much reading normally from these books. But this one I needed to. What the, the writing is what's so stellar about this book. And reading some of the different passages helps convey so you get an experience what I did. 
the the art is simple. I can point the ca you know camera or whatever and show you. Here's what it looks like. You can see for yourself. Um, so I hope that you uh, indulge me and it, and, it, and it you didn't grow bored. The writing is good, so hopefully you weren't. Um, the one thing I loved about this particular book, besides what I s stated already in the video, was how Zdarsky structured the narration. What I mean by that is the um, this book is done in sort of like small little vignettes, little two page, two to three, well, maybe one to three page parts. Uh, it starts off the first two pages with the abusive husband and the boyfriend, um, with the next page being the fake daredevil showing up and then the cops. And then we get two pages of Electra confronting Matt Murdock saying, you know, you need help and I'm going to be your new stick. Then it follows up with the next two pages with the Libras family and the husband and wife having some, you know, marital affairs. Then we cut over to uh, a page with Detective Cole and his new partner uh, kind of exchanging some dialogue and Cole's doesn't really want to, doesn't like his new partner and they're trying to set up, you know, this trap to catch superheroes. The next two pages, Spider-Man taking the bait on this. Then we cut over two more pages where Matt's visiting Joey, his little parolee. He's trying to help out this family. Then two pages of the Kingpin. Then back to two pages of Spider-Man, you know, etc. It's the way that's structured is excellent. You're bouncing around. You're getting just enough time with that element of the story. And before it wears out, it's welcome. Boom, you're onto another part where you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm super intrigued. What's going on here? And just before it doesn't wear out, it's welcome. He cuts you back over to a different part. And now you've got like five different plot threads hanging in the air and he's juggling them and you are on the hook of each of them. You're like, you want to know more. Fantastic. Um, I, I could go on and on and blab about this book. Daredevil number 11 is the best issue of a series so far of really good issues. Um, I loved it. I really hope if I spoiled this for you, you know, that maybe this is something that'll get you to jump on and check it out. I'm glad I powered through. I'm going to stay current on this. Hopefully Chichetto stays on this book for a while. Um, this book is not selling great um, and it needs your help. This is the kind of books we clamored for, right? If you're kind of on my side of the fence in the comic community and against, you know, where the industry has gone, support books like this. I understand a lot of people are fed up and say, oh, Marvel and DC are just producing crap now. I don't want to buy them. I agree. Don't buy crap comics. This is not a crap comic. Buy Daredevil number 11. <laughs> Please, you know, so show Marvel that this is the kind of stuff they should produce by showing it get sales. As long as the shit books get sales and the good books don't get sales, there's no reason for these guys ever to start making good comics again. The only reason they make good comics is because they sell. Um, so hopefully you agree with me. Hopefully you enjoy these books. I look forward to talking to you guys um, and sharing the love. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.